Hello everyone. Today we see about pain. In this section, I discuss about the various aspects of pain and basic physiology of pain. So, main objectives of this course includes on completion of this section, the students will be able to describe the meaning of pain, explain the physiology of pain. List the types of pain based on location, duration, etiology, and intensity. And list the factors which affect pain. And describe the methods of pain assessment. Explain the pain assessment tools used for adults and children. Describe the non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic strategies in pain management. First of all, see what is pain. Pain is an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage. The definition which is said by International Association for the Study of Pain in the year 2012. So I repeat it, pain is an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. In other terms, the pain is whatever the person says it is and exists whenever the person says it does. In the, in the sense, it is something as subjective phenomena or subjective uh, feelings. So whenever the person says he feels pain, that is what the existence of pain. Then what is pain management? Pain management is the relief of pain or reduction in the pain to a comfortable level that is acceptable to the client. Then see basic physiology of pain. Quite everyone knows it. Where there will be on stimuli and there is a one carrier and the, there is a perceiving center. So as it is see in the physiology of pain, that is as it is shown in this picture, there is a pain receptors in the skin are activated. That is, when there is a pain stimuli, so immediately the pain receptors in the skin are activated. That the term say transduction. Okay. Then followed by that is it moves upwards. That is followed by a signal travels up the peripheral nerve to the spinal cord. That is a the phase we say transmission phase. From that, the client becomes aware and conscious of the pain, that is perception. And finally, the neurons in the brain send signals down to spinal cord to release substances to inhibit the pain, that is for the modulation. This is a basic physiology of pain, that is transduction, transduction in the sense when there is a stimuli, that is when there is a pain stimuli, immediately the pain receptors in the skin are activated, the, that is what called transduction. Then Immediately after, a signal travels up the peripheral nerve to the spinal cord. That is, we say, the stage of transmission. That is, the impulse is transmitting. Okay. Then, client becomes aware and conscious of the pain. That is, the stage of perception. And once it is perceived, so the neurons in the brain send signals down to spinal cord to release substance to inhibit the pain. That is, the stage of modulation. We see in detail. The first is the pain perception and the pathways. First one is a peripheral transmission mechanism of peripheral pain sensitization. So what happens there? A sensory receptor or nociceptors, that is a free nerve endings are located in skin, fascia, bone, muscle, ligaments and mucous membranes. In vistra, they are found in capsules of most organs. As you know, there is a neurons or the res, uh, sensory receptors are there in our body all, all around. So when there is a stimuli, it will carry the uh, stimuli to the brain. These receptors are activated by mechanical, chemical and thermal stimuli. That is sensory input or painful stimuli. So the mechanical stimuli that is noxious stretch or pressure 
due to distension of viscera, fascia or bone, periosteum, occlusion or obstruction. That is what the mechanical stimuli. Then when there is chemical stimuli, that is chemical stimuli is a tissue injury, inflammation or infection. And thermal stimuli that is burns. So the nociceptors comprise of two types of fibers. They are A delta fiber and C fiber. These are the two types of fibers that present in the nociceptors. Here we see a delta fiber are myelinated that carry rapid sharp pricking or piercing sensations that is mechanical nociceptors usually uh, carried by the delta fibers that is a delta fibers and the other is the c fiber which are non myelinated that conduct diffuse dull burning or achy painful sensations so these produce constant pain Next is the peripheral activation of nociceptors by mediators or chemical substances. Here we see histamine. Histamine released from mast cell in inflammation. Then bradykinin, leukotrienes and prostaglandin. That will cell wall destruction. Then serotonin released by platelets and mast, mast cells. And neuropeptides, otherwise we say substance P, released into peripheral tissue. These are the nociceptors by mediators or chemical substances that is histamine, bradykinin, leukotrienes, prostaglandins, serotonin and neuropeptides. Hence what happens the pain to be perceived the stimuli must be transmitted first to spinal cord and then to the central nervous system. As it is first we discuss about the that pathway. This is what the pictorial representation of the pain pathway that is in the externally there is a here is the pain stimuli when there is a pain stimuli there definitely the nociceptors will be activated that is we already say uh, a delta fiber and a c fibers so it will be move on to the this stimuli will be move on to the spinal cord that is the horn dorsal horn then it will transfer to the brain that is through the brain stem that is pons and medulla then then mid brain then thalamus then it is a sensory cortex stimulation will be there so this is a substances released from damage so that is bradykinin all the we said already histamine and all so second is the pain transmission in the spinal cord So during that, that is a second order neurons are found in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. That is over the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, the second order neurons will be presented. That is two spinothalamic tracts, that is lateral and medial. In lateral aspect, the sensory pain discrimination, that is painful stimuli transmitted to sensory cortex for perception and interpretation that is what done in the lateral lateral spinothalamic tract then over the medial spinothalamic tract that is synapses in other parts of the brain such as limbic system that is what the emotional center then painful stimuli is subjected to emotional and behavioral influences so that will be transferred through the medial spinothalamic tract. The third aspect is the central nervous system processing. So central nervous system processing which occurs at three levels of brain that is thalamus, midbrain and cortex. In thalamus what happens is it relays station 4 sensory input from spinothalamic tract. Then in the midbrain signals to cortex to increase the awareness of the stimuli. And cortex which discriminates and interpret the pain. This is the central nervous system processing that is 
three levels of brain will be activated over there that is thalamus midbrain cortex thalamus that is what the relay station for sensory input from spinothalamic tract that midbrain that signals to cortex to increase the awareness of the stimuli by the time the cortex there is the discrimination and interpretation of pain stimuli will carry over Next we see about the inhibitory and facilitatory mechanism. First one is a neuro neuroregulators. The neuroregulators are that is a neurotransmitters and a neuromodulators. The neurotransmitters are chemicals that act at the postsynaptic nerve cell membrane that is acetylcholine, epinephrine and dopamine will be released. Then neuromodulators. Neuromodulators are the endogenous opiates that is protein hormones in the brain. So that is epinephrines, engaphrines that is a morphine like substances. So the neuromodulators. Next we see what is gate control theory. Usually gate control theory that is uh, explained as a so pain conduction pathway theory. Okay. Here it is proposed to explain the relationship between pain and emotion. First theory to suggest that psychological factors play a role in the perception of pain. And it helps health professionals to recognize the holistic nature of pain and use distraction and imagery techniques. So in gating mechanism in spinal cord already we know there are two nerve fibers that is A delta as well as the C fiber that it transmit impulses from periphery. So these impulses travel to dorsal horn of spinal cord in substantia glandnosa. That is what short term SG. Then cells in substantia glandnosa which inhibit or facilitate pain impulses transmitted to trigger cells that is T cells. So gate is closed when T cell activity is inhibited and when it is open the pain impulses access, access to brain. Already we seen there is a from the uh, peripheral sensory area that is a when there is a pain stimuli it will uh, move upward to the uh, spinal cord that is a uh, A delta fiber and a C fibers that will carry this stimuli to the through the spinal cord then from the spinal cord that will move further to the brain that is central nervous system. So in between that is a, if these T cells are inhibited then it is a closed. So these stimuli will not move to the brain. Otherwise only when there is a T cell is activated or it is open it can move to brain and then the person sends the pain. This is what the mechanism of gating theory, gate control theory. So similar gating mechanism exists in nerve fibers descending from thalamus and a cerebral cortex. So these areas in brain regulate the thoughts and emotions. When pain occurs, a person's thoughts and emotions can modify perceptual phenomena. Next we see what are the types of pain. So types of pain is categorized under varying characters. First classification is based on the location of pain. So based on the location it is classified into cutaneous pain. Cutaneous pain in the sense is a sharp burning pain that has its origin in skin or subcutaneous tissue. Second one is a somatic pain. Somatic pain which originate in deep body structures such as muscles, joints and bones. Next type is visceral pain. There is a pain arising from the visceral organs and is often perceived in an area far away from the organ causing the pain. For example, that is renal colic pain from appendicitis, peptic ulcer pain. There is a visceral pain. Most of all, there is a 
uh, we say radiating pains so actually uh, usually we sense the pain not from the exact location that is what the visceral pain next is a referred pain pain appears to arise in different areas and be referred to other parts of the body example cardiac pain may be felt in the shoulder or left arm with or without chest pain there is a difference between visceral pain and referred pain visceral pain in the sense arising pain arising from the visceral organs and is often perceived in an area far away from the organ causing the pain actually uh, the pain is arise from the exactly from the particular organ only but we sense the pain in some other body area that is what the visceral pain preferred pain in the sense from the exact location the pain will be uh, radiated to otherwise it will transfer to uh, other body areas near nearer structures that is what the referred pain next is the types of pain based on the duration next is classification based on duration the pain are classified into first one is acute pain acute in the sense the sudden onset of pain that is described as pain that follows injury to the body prompting inflammatory response and subsides as healing take place so usually this acute pain lasts for 3 to 6 months usually associate with specific injury or usually decreases along with healing the examples it says are surgery dental interventions burns or cuts or bone fracture these are the acute pain next classification is chronic pain on the basis of duration chronic pain in the sense is described as pain that persists beyond the time when healing takes place so the characters are it lasts 6 months or longer it is a constant and intermittent it persists beyond the expected healing time the examples are cancer pain arthritis nerve pains and back pains next classification there is a type of pain based on the etiology based on etiology it is classified into neuropathic pain neuropathic pain in the sense pain result from injury to or abnormal functioning of peripheral nerves or the central nervous system so because of damage to the uh, nervous system if the pain originate due to that that is what neuropathic pain next is a intractable pain that is pain that is resistant to therapy and persists despite of variety of interventions that is intractable pain next is a phantom limb pain phantom limb pain in the sense pain experience following amputation of limb or part of limb may be due to degenerating nerve trapped in the scar tissue of the amputation site usually we say it is a false pain so due to misinterpretations from the missing limb may still remain in the brain causing phantom pain next is a psychogenic pain psychogenic pain there is a physical cause of pain cannot be identified usually some of them complaint of pain but we cannot recognize whether it is exactly from the physiological disturbance or not so they psychologically feel that they have the sense of pain next is the types of pain based on the intensity based on intensity it is classified into mild pain mild pain that is a pain rating of 1 to 3 in a pain scale of 0 to 10 second is a moderate pain the pain rating of 4 to 6 based on the pain scale and the severe pain pain rating of 7 to 10 so on the basis of the pain scale that is the rating will be 0 to 10 this is what the pain scale so in that zero in the sense that is this is the pain scale uh, least is zero and the highest is 10 so when the patient say the pain of zero in the sense they don't have pain that is no pain and the rating of 1 to 3 is a mild pain and 4 to 6 is moderate pain and 7 to 10 is a severe pain that is a worst pain next what are the factors which affect pain experience That is quite commonly we do know there is a socio cultural factors since uh, because every individual is a unique so the intensity otherwise the 
sensitivity of the pain stimuli is not same for everyone so some of the factors that is socio cultural factors that affect the pain experience then age and developmental stage this so is based on the age their pain experience is varied then environment and support people that is also quite normal environment otherwise we are where we belongs to we have no more people who support us means so emotionally or physically if we hurt we easily break down so when there is no supporting system and all it will be some more resistance otherwise some more uh, tolerable to the pain then past experience with the pain ones one who have previous experience of pain their level of uh, further experience or the level of intensity will be decreased so once it is uh, experiencing pain as a uh, new so their intensity will be more then meaning of pain that is individualized so according to the individual difference the pain is the feel of pain otherwise the intensity of pain otherwise the experience of pain is different next the basic methods of pain assessment which are the measures you can use to assess the pain or which are the instruments is available to assess the pain the here this is first one is a patient self report already know pain it is a subjective form of report so patient says you know, they have the pain and the intensity of pain location of pain or the type of pain what they feel so there is a patient self report is a one of the basic method of pain assessment next is report of family members other person close to the patient or the caregiver who is familiar with the patient they can explain about the pain then non verbal behaviors non verbal behaviors in the sense some of them may cry some of them may feel uh, what is sad facial expressions these are some non verbal clues so through that we can identify the pain then physiologic measures physiologic measures in the sense our vital parameters so when there is a, a change in pain level there is a when there is a increase in pain increase pain so pain leads to increase the variations in vital signs okay that is uh, most often increase heart rate increase body temperature so these are the associated features of pain that is a physiologic measures then what are the components of pain assessment here we can see the characters and the description so first one is a provocation provocation here the techniques or the circumstances that cause the pain to return to or escalate so what was the provoking situation or what was the triggering factor that is a first character of that is a pain assessment then palliation palliation is techniques or circumstances that reduce or relieve pain then quality that is a description of pain whether it is a sharp pain or dull or burning pain then region or radiation so exactly which is site that is a site of the pain and involved area that is where the where, which area patient sense pain or whether the pain radiating to nearby any uh, body areas so that is a region and radiation then severity severity in the sense magnitude or rating of the pain already said if, if you give a scale of 0 to 10 so then they can rate or how extend or the how severe the pain is then timing period the pain has existed so what is the duration or what is the intensity of pain then pain management history we collect about past medications or interventions to relieve pain whether they adopted any of the measures to relieve pain next what are the effects of pain so first is the physiological the physiological effects are increased blood pressure increased respiration and increased pulse rate so there will be a pallor diaphoresis that is excessive sweat pupil dilation and other behavioral effects are morning in the sense they cry or make unnecessary sounds you are crying grimace that is in the facial expression they show 
then clenched teeth some of them will uh, hardly bite the teeth then wrinkled forehead lip biting immobilization and protective mo movements of body parts this is the effects of pain that is physiological effect as well as the behavioral effects when someone have a pain and avoidance of conversation then pain assessment tools first we see what are the pain scales for adult in that the first one is unidimensional tool unidimensional tool like numeric rate scale visual analog scale and categorical scale then multi dimensional tool like brief pain inventory megill pain questionnaire and neuropathy pain then first one is the in adult that is numerical scale or it is say 0 to 10 numeric pain intensity scale so here there is a rating from 0 to 10 zero is no pain and the 10 is the worst possible pain as it is already said there is a the score between 1 to 3 is mild pain 4 to 6 denotes moderate pain and 7 to 10 denotes the severe pain that is based on the numeric pain scale and visual analog scale this it is a standard tool for rating of pain either patient's own rating or related by the healthcare worker is a straight line with the one end meaning no pain and the other end meaning worse pain imaginable here we can see that so we ask about the how severe the pain is no pain and the worse pain something similarly like the previous one but there is no rating exactly then adult categorical scale so this categorical scale used to use of verbal and visual descriptors to identify pain intensity for example faces pain scale for adult here we see that so this is what the categorical scale that is based on fa facial expression as well as their features you can see the the, the person or the patient seems uh, pleasant then there is a no pain so uh, they have some frenzy feel in the sense hurt a little further hurt a little more that is in the stage of uh, not responding then hurt even more something like a sad face then hurts hard a lot that is some more in the morning phase then hurt was they are crying so this is a categorical scale so zero in the sense none similarly mild 1 to 3 moderate 4 to 6 severe 7 to 10 next is a pain assessment tool for children first one is faces pain rating scale outer pain scale numeric scale word graphic rating scale uh, visual analog scale so first one is a wong baker faces pain rating scale as it is seen already the adult one this is what for children that is best for pediatric that is 3 year old less than 3 years culturally diverse and mentally challenged clients it is used as pictures so based on their facial expression we determine what is the level of the pain then outer scale that is it assesses pain for children aged 3 to 13 years with a photos or a numeric scale on the picturization it is evident that then numeric scale for children here also the numeric rating scale no pain if it is a score of 5 moderate pain and a the worst pain then word graphic rating scale usually used for the age between 4 to 17 years of then word graphic rating scale it shows no pain little pain medium pain large pain and worst possible pain so the club patient or the child can choose that what level of pain they feel because 4 to 17 means they are expressing state they can uh, describe the type of pain they feel then visual analog scale that is similar the facial expression and also the numerics are there 
So no pain, moderate pain as well as the worst pain. That is the rate of 0 to 10. Then we see what is the frequency we are supposed to follow for pain reassessment. So the criteria are within 30 minutes after parental administration of pain medication, within 1 hour after oral administration of pain medication and after each and every report of new or changes in pain. This is the frequency at which we are supposed to do a reassessment of pain. Next is strategies in pain management. The strategies include acknowledging and accepting the client's pain. In the sense, uh, pain is a subjective form. We cannot visualize that. We cannot measure that. So what the client says or the what patient says, the pain, that is what the uh, their level of pain. So we're supposed to acknowledge them and accept what their pain is, what they verbalize. Then assist support persons, reducing misconception about pain, reducing fear and anxiety, then preventing pain. Then, for, then see the pain management. First one is a non-pharmacological management. In non-pharmacological management, that is relaxation techniques. When we provide a relaxation technique, there will be get a, some relief from the pain stimuli. Then imagery technique. Imagery techniques in the sense, we just give a diversional therapy. Uh, bring their attention from the pain stimuli and uh, divert to some pleasant uh, atmosphere or pleasant, pleasant feel we are supposed to give. That time they will get a diverter from the pain and that will help to reduce the pain. Then massage to relieve the pain. Then humor that is also diversion therapy. Then heat or cold application that is based on the indications. Second is the pharmacological management. In pharmacological management we usually use NSAIDs that is non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, narcotic analgesics, adjuvants and placebo response. See the details in the pharmacological management. First, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, that is or acetaminophen. So it acts by inhibiting the synthesis of prostaglandin. Act on the peripheral nerve receptors to reduce transmission and reception of pain stimuli. Second is opioids or narcotic analgesics. So how it reduce the pain in the sun? It acts on the central nervous system to produce a combination of depressing and stimulating effect. Then adjuvants such as antidepressants or anticonvulsants work by inhibiting serotonin reuptake in the central nervous system. Next is a placebo response such as sugar pills or an injection of normal saline. In the sense we reassure them otherwise in the sense we administer medication so uh, they feel they are better. Then pharmacologic pain management according to WHO the three step analgesic ladder. The first one is a pain persisting or increasing in the sense non opioid plus adjuvant therapy. Then pain persisting or increasing, opioid for mild to moderate pain, plus non-opioid and adjunct therapy, may or may not. Then third is the freedom from cancer like pain, opioid for moderate to severe pain, may, admit, may or may not be non-opioid plus may or may not the adjunct therapy. This is the three step analgesic ladder according to World Health Organization. So what are the methods of drug administration? This is very basic uh, information about what are the routes or the methods of drug administration. First one is a nurse administered analgesia that is on the demand basis something like a traditional method of treating pain. Next patient controlled analgesia that is self administration of analgesics. Next is the oral route. This is the most preferred method that is non-inversive convenient and cost effective method of administration then intramuscular route it provides a rapid pain control this is a fast relief we get then intravenous is provide most rapid reduction of relief of pain continue with that 
Rectal route. This is an alternative route to parenteral administration for people unable to take oral medications. Then we can depend on the rectal route of drug administration. Then transdermal route. That is a skin patch. Usually delivers medications over 48 to 72 hours. Then transmucosal analgesia, which is achieved either sublingually or orally by means of lozenges or lollipops. Then continuous subcutaneous analgesia, that is intraspinal and epidural analgesia. Then this is a summary that is almost all uh, points relating to pain is over, that is what is pain. This is a summary statement, what are the things we have seen in this section. This pain is a subjective sensation. Then types of pain may be described in terms of location, source, duration and intensity. The most reliable indicator of the presence of pain is the client's self-report. Pain management includes non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic management. Uh, uh, along with that, we discuss about the physiology of pain theory in the sense gate control theory. I hope you understand about this topic. Thank you for watching.